All right, just going to do a video refuting this heretic, this guy called Dan Corner, or as I call him, I call him Damned Corner, because he is damned to hell, quite frankly. He teaches a false gospel. He uh, professes to be an ex-Catholic, but when, when you look at his stuff, and I'm going to show this uh, in this video, uh, he claims to be an ex-Catholic, but he still has all the same, all the self-righteousness of, uh, of Roman Catholicism, plain and simple. I was uh, telling this to a sister in Christ last night over Instagram. I was saying, you know, that he claims, he claims to be ex-Catholic, but when you look at his false gospel, his gospel message he preaches, it's just the same as Roman Catholicism. I was saying to her, you know, that he may have left Catholicism, but Catholicism certainly has not left him. It's that simple. We're going to see that in, in his, uh, his website here. And by the way, too, he's he's basically most known for basically being rabid against eternal security. Uh, but here's the website. It's called Evangelical Outreach. Uh, and the first thing I want to point out, too, is you're going to notice on his website, he's constantly promoting himself. You know, it, like he's always putting stuff about himself, advertisements to his books, you know, donations and everything else. And you say, well, don't you do that? Yeah, I have a link on my website and my, and my YouTube, YouTube page for donations, but I'm not just puts plastering that all over the all over the, the website and every single thing is about me no uh let me just go to a verse of scripture on the matter and this just shows the kind of ego this guy has because you find us a lot with these conditional security you know self-righteous heretics they have a they, they, when they're very prideful like that yeah they're gonna have a big, they're gonna obviously have a huge ego about themselves but where's the uh, here it is john chapter 3 verse 30 he must increase but i must de decrease just that simple uh christ is the one that, so, that should be lifted up and exalted and promoted. Not, you know, obviously you can promote your work, obviously, but when you just plaster all over the thing like he does, just shows the big ego he's got. Uh, but that's not the main point of the video. The main point is to show that, like I said, he may have left Catholicism, but Catholicism has not left him clearly. So you go on this thing here, uh, Dan Corner's stand, he says right there. And just notice here when he gives his gospel message, notice how. I'm just going to read it and you, you see it for yourself, but notice how he makes it all about you. It's, it's self-righteousness. He says here on this, this uh, info, I guess, a graphic or just this image he made basically, the only thing that is really that is really important is you getting into paradise and escaping eternal fire. Jesus taught to keep seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness his righteousness first. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And this is another thing about these conditional security heretics. They're always going to be non-dispensational. They, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. And also, he's he's not King James only. He quotes from new versions all through the thing as well. I mean, the guy's got all kinds of problems, but uh, you'll find that there. He's non-dispensational. Because when you're non-dispensational, you're going to believe in conditional security. Why? Because you'll go back to the Old Testament. You'll go to verses in the time of Jacob's trouble, which he does all the time, to apply it for us today. And again, Matthew chapter 6 is the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew, chap Matthew, Matthew chapter is 5 through 7. Sorry about that, just running on a, on a four-hour sleep. I was up late last night. But you'll see that Matthew chapter 5 or 7 is the Sermon on the Mount. It's laws for the millennial kingdom. Now, instruction in righteousness, yeah, there's definitely a lot there that can be applied, you know. But uh, when it comes to who it's, who it's for, it's the laws for the millennial kingdom, or some call it the constitution for the kingdom. Hence why you have the kingdom of heaven being mentioned over and over again in Matthew chapters uh, 5 through 7. What's the kingdom of heaven? Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. It talks about the kingdom of heaven is that is you know it suffers violence and the violence take it by force it's that physical earthly kingdom on the earth it's it's a future it's for the future events uh so it's not it's not self salvation wise it's not for us today but he says uh and continue to make every effort to enter god's kingdom but wait a second you have to make effort to enter god's kingdom but i thought jesus christ is who saves you but you're having to make the efforts and you're going to see this too, how they always talk about both sides of the mouth. They'll say, oh, we don't believe in work salvation, but you have to, you know, you have to endure, you have to do this, you have to do that. See, it's all about you. It's never about Christ. And he, he confirms it in this image right here. So look at this. You are holding on, Revelation 3.11. Keeping yourself pure. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22. Ooh, keeping yourself pure? But I thought the blood of Jesus Christ washes away your sins and purifies you. But you're keeping yourself pure for salvation. You know, it's Roman Catholicism, plain and simple. And by the way, too, uh, this guy also does, and this is a common thing with conditional security heretics, uh, and I've, I've shown this on my website, they just love taking scripture out of context. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 22, he talks, he basically makes it a salvation verse. Let's look at the context of the passage there. 
And this is another thing too, you know, whenever you're dealing with these these heretics who uh, deny imputed righteous or eternal security, always look at the context of the verses they're quoting because nearly every single time they're ripping the thing out of context and making it into a salvation verse when in context it's got nothing to do with salvation. But here's the verse that he quotes. And notice how he only quotes the, the la latter part of the verse. Okay, he won't deal with the whole verse right there. First Timothy chapter five, verse 22. Lay hands suddenly on no men, neither be partaker of, a, of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Okay, and what's the context dealing with? It's dealing about instructions for the church. Okay, so notice how he won't deal with the full verse. Why does it say keep that keep you know keep thyself pure? Because so you're not going to be a partaker of other men's sins. Okay, it's talking about you know elders and, and laying hands on people. You know, it's not talking about saving yourself by keeping yourself pure. Nowhere in the context is that is that taught. You know. Uh, this is what happens there. They, they just take stuff out of context and twist it. You know, so he make, he twists this verse about basically, you know, separating yourself from people who are sinners and, you know, keeping yourself pure and makes it into a salvation verse. Scripture twisting Satan, this is what this guy is. Uh, and your lamp burning, Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Uh, you must endure to the end to, to salvation. Of course, they always quote that in Matthew chapter 10, 10 verse 22. Uh, think about that verse. Let's, let's go to the text right there. Okay. And this is another thing too, it's always good to look at the verses they're quoting because then you'll see what's going on there. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Okay, now again, who is he talking to in this passage there? And this is another thing too, these heretics, again, with their non-dispensationalists, and I could, I could just go off about this for a long time about the dispensational aspect. This is one thing they don't do. Okay, because they don't rightly divide the word of truth, they don't understand that the New Testament did not begin until after the death of Jesus Christ. You can read about that in Hebrews chapter, I believe it's verse Hebrews chapter nine, verses fifteen down to verse twenty. It talks about how the the, the, the death of the testator and, and the shedding of his blood brought in the New Testament, talking about Jesus Christ there. Matthew chapter ten is doctrinally before the sacrifice of Christ. Okay? So the perfect sacrifice had not come in yet. So doctrinally they were still under the old testament. So that's what these heretics don't understand when they don't rightly divide the word of truth. They make a mess of scripture. But again, who is he talking to in this passage there? Okay, uh, There's no Christians anywhere in the four gospels prior to the crucifixion because Christian means you're in Christ. Nobody was in Christ apart from the apostles before the crucifixion. John chapter 17 talks about that, how the apostles were in Christ. But basically, uh, Matthew chapter uh, 10 verses 5 down to verse 8, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, who was Jesus Christ's earthly ministry for? Okay, who was it to? It was to the Jews. Okay. Now again, there can be instruction in righteousness, but there was there was no Gentile Christians. Basically, I'll put it this way: there were Gentiles who were saved during the ministry of Jesus Christ. Absolutely, there's definitely examples of that. But his main focus of his ministry was to the Jews, the physical nation of Israel. Okay, there was no Christians anywhere in the four Gospels. It says, like I said, but go rise to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, again, what's the kingdom of heaven? Matthew chapter eleven, verse twelve. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay, uh, how do you take something by force and it can suffer violence? Because it's a physical earthly kingdom. Okay, so when they're preaching the kingdom of heaven, basically what's going on in these these four gospels, and in this particular case in Matthew chapter ten, is they're presenting the kingdom of heaven, the physical earthly kingdom, to the Jews. Why? Because the King Jesus Christ is on the earth. Okay, these people don't understand that because they don't really divide the word of truth. The gospel of the kingdom is not the gospel of Christ. It's not the gospel we preach today. We're not we're not preaching the kingdom of heaven. We're preaching salvation through Christ. Again, these heretics have no knowledge of that. So again, it's to the Jews, and also you got you know healing the sick, cleanse the lepers. It's to, it's also to the apostles as well. So you got yeah Matthew chapter ten verse twenty two. Yeah, Amen. I don't disagree with that. It's not for our dispensation. And also you can apply this to the time of Jacob's trouble as well, because you see a lot of parallels between Matthew chapter ten and Matthew chapter twenty four. Okay, you go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, uh, talks about the same thing, enduring to the end to be saved. So, yeah, it's not for our dispensation. You can get all upset about that, but quite frankly, that's just what the Word of God teaches. Uh, you must endure to the end. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. You know, of course, they love using that one. Here's another one, here's another one they like using. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8 through 9. This is another one they like twisting into a salvation passage when it's got nothing to do with that. 
Uh, let's go. To, let's go. Let's actually turn to the verse. Let's see what it says. Also, I have a page on my website as well where I go through and basically debunk and answer all the verses that like twisting. And this is one I, I answered on my, my uh, website. So Galatians chapter six verse eight. This is the one they like using. Um, for he, so, sorry, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And they take that and say, see, you got to sow to the flesh to basically save yourself. Okay, is that what the, the uh, text is talking about? Again, these heretics will not read the context. Uh, this is what I have written on my page, by the way, the, the page I mentioned earlier. In context, Paul is saying basically that you reap what you sow. He talks about that in verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man, so whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Okay? And also, he, uh, the point of the fact is that uh, sowing to the sinful flesh will reap corruption. If you compare verse 8 to Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 10. But the body, it's basically the body of the flesh prior to the resurrection or the rapture, as it's called, is unredeemed, corrupt, and sinful. It talks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses uh, 42 down to verse 54. Also, you can read about that in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21, Romans chapter 8, verse 21 and 25, and Luke chapter 20, verses uh, 34 down to verse 38. That's what I was talking about there. And reaping to that sinful body of flesh will result in a premature death. You can read about that also in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 to 32 with the chasing of the Lord there. Uh, the wages of sin is death, plain and simple. Uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 21 to 23 talks about that. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 13 to 15 is another verse on that. So this is not saying that a Christian is saved by works of self-righteousness. It's just talking about if you sow to the flesh, you're going to have physical death. But it's not, not saying you've lost your salvation or that you haven't earned salvation by holiness. It's not at all what the text is saying. And when you sow to the Spirit, you know, same thing about that. You know, you reap life everlasting. Okay, it's not, it's not a salvation uh, verse there in the, in, man, in the way that they're putting it, basically. Then, of course, Revelation 2, verse 10 to 11, time of Jacob's trouble, dispensationally. And notice how it says, too. So notice how it's all about you. Look at this. You are battling hard for eternity. Fight hard, very hard. So the blood of Jesus Christ pays for my sins, but then I'm having to fight for my salvation. It's just Roman Catholicism, plain and simple. Talk to any Roman Catholic, they'll tell you, you know, we're, we're war, we're basically, we're in war, we're, we're the church militant, as they'll call it. Yeah, it's Roman Catholicism, plain and simple. That's why I said it again. He may have left Catholicism, but Catholicism has not left him. Certainly hasn't, because you're having to fight hard, very hard for your salvation. Um, let's go to Matthew chapter 11, verses. And this is a video I've been wanting to do for quite a while on this heretic. I kind of just, I put it on the back burner, but... Uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh-oh, we have a bit of a contradiction there. We got damned corner, again, as I call him that, saying that you have to battle hard and fight hard for your salvation, but Christ saying you have rest for your souls and my yoke is easy. Hmm, interesting there. And for the record, too, before anyone accuses me of being easy believism or antinomian, I've done stuff against that as well. See, it's a whole false dichotomy of you have the one side, you have the the uh, basically the lawless, uh, sin condoning antinomian, and then you have the hyper, you know, self righteous work salvationist on the other side. Both sides are false. Okay, so you have Dan, you know, damned corner basically. Again, he gives you damn the hell on one side representing the hyper work salvation. Then you have guys like Jack Smack 666, or you know, as he called himself, Jack Smack 77, on the on the extreme other side, representing the lawless antinomians who reject any kind of post salvation sanctification and that you can just live however you want and, and there's no chasing of the Lord or anything like that. See, both sides are false. Both see and they're fighting back and forth, but in reality both sides are are false and basically have false gospels, in other words. You know? Uh, the correct position is that you're saved by faith in Christ, okay, not of you, not of yourselves. However, post salvation, after your salvation, there's that changed life that comes in, and that's something that that neither of, of those heretics, on the antinomians or the hyper work salvationists, neither one of those, neither basically neither side understands that. Neither side understands the uh, regeneration of the Holy Ghost and the post salvation changed life. So, that's another thing as well. Both of them either reject it or have a misunderstanding of it. So yeah. You know, it's just the just the self righteousness and work salvation just oozing out of this this uh, heretic in this uh, page right here. He also uh, quotes again, you know, Romans chapter eleven, verse nineteen, down to verse twenty two. That they like using that one as well, uh, talking about national cutoff. It's got nothing to do with salvation. 
He says here, look at this. Christians must know of their vital need to endure to the end for salvation's sake. They, they look at this, they must hold on to what they have so that no one will take their crown. So notice how he, when he's twisting these verses, he's making it all about you. It's just that simple. Now, this actually reminds me of something. Okay. And this is also the kind of category that Dan Corner falls into. Because not once does he mention Jesus Christ and what I just read you. It's all about you, but never about the blood of Jesus Christ. You're basically saving yourself, just like in Roman Catholicism. Roman, or sorry, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And I know Dan Corner, he likes quoting this verse, but he won't read the full context because it actually condemns him. Uh, many will say unto many will say sorry many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works notice how they're boasting look what we've done Lord look what we've done in your name look at all look all the works we've done but look what God says to them and then will I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity hmm. so in other words they were never his. So it kind of shows the thing of false converts too, which again, these conditional security heretics just kind of conveniently deny the fact that conveniently or either deny or overlook the fact that there can be false converts, you know, but notice that or two, he says, I never knew you. Hmm. Because if they lost their salvation, wouldn't that mean Christ knew them at one point? So if, if Christ never knew them, that means they were never his to begin with, meaning that they were never saved. Basically they were, they were had a false profession of faith. They were false converts, you know? kind of proves the whole thing of eternal security. But if they were saved and lost their salvation, Christ would have said, hey, I knew you at one point, but you know now I don't know you. But he says, I never knew you because they were never his to begin with. Something that these heretics seem to conveniently kind of overlook about that verse. Or also the fact that it could be removed from his, his modern Catholic versions. But anyway, this is also on his page about um, his, his beliefs, basically what are Christian beliefs. Yeah. And again, notice just the self-righteousness he puts in here as well, this other little image he made and again notice how no mention of christ's sacrifice it's all about yourself uh, according to the bible eternal life is much more than just the gift of god it is a present tense possession eternal life is a hope titus 3 7 yet to be reaped galatians uh, 6 8 he quotes in the age to come mark chapter 10 verse 30 for only those who persist in doing good ooh, doing good is is what you is gives you eternal life hmm sounds like work salvation but 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 he's not a work salvationist, remember? See again, just the, the the double speak of this guy. So you're having to do good to attain an eternal life. Work self you're having to basically do good works, but he's not a Roman Catholic. Yeah. Sure. And don't grow aware any quotes Romans two seven. Again, out of context. I've again I've answered that on my website. Let me just go ahead and answer it right now, because I don't want to leave any stone unturned uh, for these heretics. Romans chapter two. Yeah, he, he quotes verse seven but misses Verses uh, 8 to 10, which is interesting about that. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2 verses. Yeah, so he says, uh, Romans 2, 7, To them that who by patience, continuance, and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But notice that he won't quote verses 8 down to verse 10. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, you know, tribulation, anguish. He goes on there. Okay, what's how do you obey righteousness? Because you have to go look at the context. See, Notice the, the uh, basically the grammar there, how there's no period. It's the, the sentence is continued on here. But unto them that obey unrighteousness. How do you, how do you obey righteousness? Okay, well, simply by believing the gospel. Uh, faith in Jesus Christ is counted for righteousness. Romans chapter 4, verse 5, and Philippians 3, 9. Jesus Christ takes flame, flaming wrath on those who don't obey the gospel. It talks about that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8. And you obey the gospel by faith in Christ. Okay, you can see that in John chapter 6, verse 27 to 29. And 1 John chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Okay, so again, they, they won't, not, that's another thing they won't do too. They won't compare scripture with scripture. See, they, they just base their thing off out of obscure, out of context verses. Uh, don't grow weary, so into the spirit. Galatians 6, 9, again, I, I answered that one. Eternal life is also a promise for Christians to hold on to the gospel truth they heard from the beginning to and to remain in Christ and the Father. You know, again, twisting that text there. It's just ridiculous. So it's all about you. Notice how, again, when he mentioned eternal life, not one mention of the blood of Christ, not one mention of a sacrifice of Christ. He's all about you having to do, it's all about works. It's all about you having to do stuff. It's never, see, again, he'll be in that category of saying, hey, Lord, didn't I do all these things in your name? You boast about your works, and God's going to say, I never knew you, meaning you're never his to begin with. 
which is certainly true of damned of damned corner. He is not a child of God. He's a child of his he's a he's a child of his father Satan basically. That's what conditional security is. Conditional security is satanic, plain and simple. Uh, what else is there? He goes. Uh, this is another one, another fun one as well. He talks about, you know, talks about Peter apparently lost his salvation when he disowned Jesus. He also says that. Um, oh, here's the. I think I mentioned that earlier. But he also talks about, uh, you know, apostasy. You can depart from the faith. Uh, here's one fun one. You can turn to evil and die spiritually. Ezekiel chapter thirty-three, verse eighteen. So apparently we're back under the Old Testament law with the Jews when there were still animal sacrifices. This is the mess you get yourself into when you're non-dispensational. There's another funny one I, I, I saw earlier. I just Yeah, here, here's a fun one. Yeah. Notice this. Again, just notice the, the mess of non-dispensationalism. God can turn away, Acts chapter 7, verse 42, blot your name out of, the, out of his book, Exodus chapter 32, verse 33. So we're back... In the in the uh, mount, they basically the Sinai mountain, with the Jews under the law when there's still animal sacrifices. Okay, he can forsake you. Second Chronicles chapter fifteen verse two. You know, and, and you know that was definitely true back on the under the Old Testament when there was the animal sacrifices under the law. But guess what? We're not under under the law today. So, yeah, uh, spit you out of his out of the body of Christ. Revelation three sixteen. He can disown you. Matthew chapter ten verse thirty three. Again. You know, under the gospel of the kingdom, and I also believe dispensationally for the time of Jacob's trouble, because when you compare Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33 with Revelation chapter 2, verses 10 to 11, it, there is a similarity there. Uh, cut you off from Christ over fruitlessness, John chapter 15, verse 2. Yeah, that's another one they like. That's another one they like to use as well, which I, I answered on my uh, website. Let me just pull, uh, pull that one up. Uh, where is it? John chapter. What was it? John chapter 15. And also again, it's out of context as well, by the way. Yeah, John chapter 15, verse 2. Yeah, let's go to that verse. Again, context is always key. John chapter 15, verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. Uh, that, yeah, very fruit, he purgeth it. That it may bring forth more fruit. Then you also see, like using verse uh, 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather together and cast him into the fire, and they are burned. Okay, so they use that to say, see, you have to you have to basically show fruit to merit salvation. See again, notice how they don't understand the post-salvation change life, how it's the Holy Ghost that works in you and cleans your life up and you show the fruits of the Spirit, but you're not doing it to save yourself. See, these guys make it all about your ability to basically live holy. You know? No mention of the Holy Ghost changing your life. See, again, these guys, both the antinomian heretics and these hyper-works heretics, both of them reject the sanctification of the Holy Ghost, and they make it all about yourself. But again, notice that. So he quotes John chapter 15, verse 2, but let's see what, what's going on in context. So in context, this passage is not saying in any way that a true believer is cast into hell. This verse is saying that a person proves, who proves not to be saved a true believer, a false convert, which again, these guys seem to reject, uh, will be cast into hell. Also, a true believer will show good fruit and good works. Okay, it talks about that in Ephesians 2.10 and Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. Uh, John chapter 15 is a warning that the evidence of true faith in Christ will produce fruit for his glory. Again, verse 2 talks about that when in context. And also John chapter 15, verse 5, and also verse 8. See, again, these heretics ignore the context. It's saying that it's the result of your salvation. It's the result of that Holy Ghost sanctification. It's not about your self-righteousness. Uh, he can, you know, cut you off over unbelief. Again, you know, talking about national cutoff of Gentiles. Uh, is that the God you say you believe in and, you know, know or have been deceived by eternal security, which denies these truths about God? Yeah, well, the God of, of Dan Corner is just the God of Roman Catholicism. It's a false works-based God who makes you rely on your self-righteousness. Uh, here it is. The, tr the Christian salvation security is conditionally. Again, Galatians chapter, he quotes first, or sorry, not Galatians. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10, you know, but he ignores verse 11, which talks about being washed by Christ, not yourself. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, you know. I'm not going to answer all these verses, because most of these verses, like any student of Scripture can just look at them and say, okay, they're not, you know, it's not about salvation. He's ignoring context. He's twisting things left and right. Uh, again, he quotes 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22, keep yourself pure. Yeah, you know, again, context. Then also, again, he says that Peter, you know, lost his salvation when he disowned Jesus. Uh, where is the other one, too? Again, you're, you're battling hard for your eternity. Fight hard. You must endure. You, look at this. You must endure to the end for salvation. What about Christ saving you? No. Because when you see when you're a Roman Catholic, like this heretic, 
you are um, you're basically trusting in yourself. Now, anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to show. This, you know, it kind of wasn't really like scripted in the matter, but basically, uh, just look through this guy's website, and you're just gonna see just self righteousness just oozing out of him. And just it's all about yourself. And, you know, if these guys were to stand before God. You know, the, I got, like, a good way to put it is that when you stand before God, if Jesus were to ever ask you, why should I let you into heaven? It shouldn't be, you know, because I. Like, if your sentence starts off by saying because I, that's already off to a bad start. It should be because Jesus Christ paid for my sins. Not because I did this or I did that. You know, and here are some verses that uh, damned corner will not quote for, quote, basically won't quote for two seconds. Or will try to just, you know, wiggle his way around and try to ignore John chapter 5 verses 24 verily verily I say unto you he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life hmm. now I'm going to compare that to John chapter 10 verses 28 or sorry 27 down to verse 29 my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life I'd I, I like to hear Dan Corner ever quote that verse. And I gave him to them eternal life, meaning you're not saving yourself or keeping yourself here by your good deeds. It's Jesus Christ giving you eternal life. Yeah. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. But according to Dan Corner, you got to basically earn your salvation by your good deeds. You know, Somehow good deeds not the same thing as good works, apparently. <laughs> what a, I mean, seriously, what a heretic. It's, it's insane. Here's another, here's another one these heretics don't can't handle. Uh, John chapter 6, verses 35 down to verse 40. And Jesus said unto them, I'm going to show full screen. Yeah. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you, that ye also have seen me, uh, that, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father that giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Clear as day. But again, these heretics will ignore that. Uh, for I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And here's a, here's the thing about, you know, oh, you have to believe, you have to obey righteousness, you have to, basically, you have to live, you have to obey Jesus for salvation. Okay, well, how do you obey Jesus? Well, he explains right here. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but to raise it up again at the last day. Notice that I'll lose nothing. Hmm. He won't lose you if you're one of his. But notice verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So when Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 talks about doing the will of the Father, you know, he, you know, he that doeth the will of the Father, yeah, what's the will of the Father? You believe on Jesus Christ. It's not about, about uh, right works of self-righteousness. He also quoted Titus chapter 3 verse 7, but kind of ignored verse 5, which is very convenient on his part. Titus 3 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Which we have done, not by our works of self righteousness. You know? Meaning it's not you keeping yourself pure to save yourself. Here's another uh, one. Here's also one they like using to try to disprove eternal security, which, again, when they read it in context, it actually refutes them. Uh, first Timothy or Second Timothy chapter two verse eleven to thirteen, and this is a faithful saying: For if we be dead in him, if we dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we, if we deny him, he also will deny us. And they they quote that, but they forget to read the very next verse: If we believe, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful; he cannot deny himself. Okay, when you compare scripture with scripture, you're you're a member of Christ's body in almost a literal sense. You can read about that in Ephesians chapter five verse thirty. If he denies you, he basically be denying himself. He essentially would be denying his own body. So that, like, one way you can put it is that if you were to cast you out of the body of Christ, he'd be, it'd be like him plucking off a finger or maybe plucking off part of his like you know body or whatever. Yeah, because you're part of his body, you know, uh, in, in almost a literal sense. I guess, again, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30 talks about that. So if you believe not, he, yeah, he by the faithful, he cannot deny himself. If you're a member of the body of Christ, you know, he won't deny you. It's just that plain and simple. Uh, and, and there's so many scriptures I can go to. Here's another another, another good one that these heretics don't like. First uh, Peter chapter one verse three to five. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy, okay, not ourselves, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. 
uh, clear as day on that, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. See, it's the power of God that keeps you. Not you're not you're not keeping yourself by your works of righteousness. Uh, yeah, these heretics they can't they, they can't they can't stand that verse. Also, I mean, there, there's many 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 other verses I can go to. There's like Second uh, Corinthians chapter uh, one verse twenty one and twenty two, Ephesians one thirteen, Ephesians four thirty. You're sealed. You know, God seals you with His Holy Spirit. There's also First Corinthians chapter one verse, uh, I believe it's verse seven to eight. Uh, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's confirming you to the end. It's Jesus Christ doing it. You're not doing it for yourself. You're basically it's not by yourself. It's by Christ. It's that simple. Uh, First Tim or Second Timothy chapter four verse eighteen, and here's also a verse that just also proves the post salvation sanctification, which again both these heretics deny. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Wait, I, th I thought you were trying to keep yourself pure to be saved. No, it's the Lord delivering you from every evil work. And notice, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You're preserved by Christ. He's preserving you and he's keeping you from every evil work. It's just that simple. These heretics, just they, they deny that. The, see, the problem is too, is that, you know, whenever they're ex-Catholic, you know, and not all of them are like this, but he's an example of somebody who's, ex-Catholic, but still retained a lot of the Catholic baggage. Like I said, he's left Catholicism, but Catholicism hasn't left him. Plain and simple. So Mark can avoid Dan, uh, damned corner. Okay, He's going to hell. He's a minister of Satan. He's still teaching his Jesuit, his, uh, Jesuit false gospel of self-righteous works. Uh, he's no different than the Pharisee in uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14, who's boasting before God, you know, God, you know, I do this, you know, I fast twice in a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. He's no different. He'll be he'll be among those who are in, uh, saying, you know, Lord, haven't I, haven't I done many wonderful works in your name? And God's gonna say, depart from me. I never knew you. So Mark and avoid Dan Corner. He's a heretic. He's just he's just a Jesuit. He's you know he's teaching Jesuit heresies. Uh, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.